Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will make this vintage handkerchief heart-shaped trinket box. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make our handkerchief trinket box, we'll start with a paper mache box. This is about four inches each way, and it has a lid. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. We also need a vintage handkerchief. It has a cute design. I like the fabric. I like the print. I like the colors. So I'm going to start by tracing the lid of the box onto a piece of medium weight chipboard. I set it like this and then I trace around it and then I will cut it out with paper scissors. And then I also have a smaller heart. I started with a two and a half inch square of graph paper like that, folded in half, and then I drew a heart or a half of a heart. Try to use the entire square. And then I cut that out opened it up and I have a, a second heart pattern and I've traced that also onto this medium weight chipboard. I'll cut both of these pieces out with my paper scissors and I'll be right back. Here are my chipboard hearts. I made sure that the, the lid, the heart that goes onto the lid is not any bigger than the edge of the lid. Oops, there we go. Is not any bigger than the edge of the lid all the way around. And I placed an X on the side that goes against the lid like that. And then for my little um, two and a half inch heart, I cut directly on the line. This one needs to be cut a little bit inside of the line. Now let's look at our handkerchief. So I've determined that this is the corner of the handkerchief that I'm going to make the uh, top tier of the, you know, the smaller heart from. And so I'm going to give myself a generous allowance. This is a air soluble ink pen and I'm going to go fairly um, wide around it, maybe half an inch or so. And I'm just going to cut that out. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then from the rest of this border, I'm going to cut a three inch. You can actually do two and three quarters, but I think I'm going to do a three inch um, all the way around. I'll start by sort of See this three right here? So I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> My edge isn't even close to being straight. <laughs> um, boom. And I'm gonna stop right here at the three. And then the same thing over here. You might wonder how big this is. It's a little more than 11 inches. Just about any size of handkerchief would work, new or old. There we go. Now I'm going to cut this out and then I'll have this border to work with. I'm going to save this center section just in case something goes wrong here. I can alternatively use maybe this motif for the top tier. Now this, I'm going to gather this up. Um, first around the inside and then around the outside to cover this chipboard heart. Um, the, but first I want to sew these together and it's a little tricky but I'm just going to put right sides together and sew this straight. It's right across here. All right this is sewn together and when you open it up you can see that the, the seamed edge is going to work right here at the top center 
And then I'm gonna gather this all the way around and then this corner will be placed right here at the bottom point, ideally. Before I gather that up, I'm gonna add some batting to the top of the heart. Remember that I have an X on the side that goes down over the lid. So I'm gonna add two layers of batting to the top of this chipboard heart. I, um, I'm just using this uh, cotton batting. You can use any kind of batting. And I have my trusty glue gun here. So I just do a little smear of, place that on top and then I'll cut it out and add a second layer. There we go, two layers of batting. I did put glue in between the two layers. You don't need a lot of glue, just enough to keep it together. And as long as I have my glue gun and batting out, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this piece as well. There we go, both of my hearts are prepared. And here is my kooky heart border, handkerchief border. And I'm gonna begin, I have a double strand of quilting thread by securing the knot right here in the back, right here. And then I'll just gather up along this raw edge and I'm gathering it up all the way. You don't need to take small stitches. You don't need to be careful. This is gonna be in the very center. It's gonna be covered by that second tier. And it doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just gather it on up. There we go, the gathering is complete and I'm going to secure the thread on the inside. And now just um, test the fit of your piece over your heart. You know, we're gonna gather this around to the back and so you just wanna make sure that you have enough to pull around to the back and that also you have the part of the handkerchief showing that is colorful and pretty. What I wanna do with this particular handkerchief is to wrap the border all the way around to the back. I don't want any of my border to show. And then I know that the center will be covered by this heart. And so the center isn't really important, but this in-between section, I want that to be sort of like a wreath. And I think this is going to work. I'm happy with that. So now I will do the same thing around the outer edge, just hand stitch, hand gather with a double strand of quilting thread. To gather up this outer edge, I'm going to start the same way by securing the thread in the seam allowance on the wrong side. And then I'm just gonna gather this up about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Just cut across the corners. You don't have to really even acknowledge those corners at this point. So right here, as I'm approaching this corner, I'm just gonna kind of cut right across. So you don't have to go stitch, 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 stitch. There we go, my gathering is complete. So I'm going to set this padded um, heart shape inside. And I'm taking care to be sure that this um, seam is at the top center and this corner is at the bottom. And then I'm gonna gather this up and you can see how the, the pleats are distributed around the edge of the heart and the tighter I can get this, the better. And I also wanna sort of See, there's a big clump of pleats on this side, so I wanna kinda of open that up a little bit and pull some of those over and just try to distribute those evenly. And then I'm gonna tighten up this, um, this thread and tie it off. Here's how it looks on the back. It's kind of messy. 
And here's how it looks on the front. So now I'm gonna secure this with a little bit of glue on the back with hot glue. And what I'm gonna do is squeeze out some glue and then sort of pull these gathers tight so that I can get it a little bit flatter and neater on the front. Let me find a spot. Okay, this is a little sloppy right here. So I'll squeeze some glue out. There's glue underneath the, the gathers there. Then I'm just gonna pull it tight against that cardboard edge and that'll neaten it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around. Lifting up the edge, squeezing a little bit of glue and then pulling it tight. And then finally here at the top center, you know, in order to make it really look like a heart, you want that to be pretty sharp and deep. So again, I'm applying some glue underneath the fabric and pulling that tight so that hopefully on the front, it looks nice and neat. That looks pretty good. That looks good. I'm gonna trim out the kind of thicker pieces, but of course I'm careful not to cut any of my gathering. And then I'm even going to add a little bit of glue to kind of squish this down flat. Now when I place this over the lid, there's generally a little gap on the side. I'm gonna try to get it nice and flat, but I'm not very worried about it because I have all sorts of options for trims that I'm going to use to fill in that gap later. Now let's cover this little heart. I want it about here, I think. Yeah, with a lot of this leaf showing at the bottom and some of the strawberries, but I also have a little bit of trim that I'm going to use, something like this. And so I, you know, I kind of want a lot of white space. Otherwise I think it might be too busy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just, you don't want to make this allowance too small. I'm cutting probably a half an inch around. A little bit less maybe. And then I'm going to clip into the top center. And then I'll just add some hot glue around here and here and just work that seam allowance into the glue. First at the top. See how I split that like that and then the bottom like this and then this and then this kind of like that nice and tight remember I'm aiming to have a lot of white space at the bottom and then just fill in Just pulling little bit by bit into the glue. It's not hard, just try to get a nice smooth edge. That looks pretty good, a nice smooth, flat, covered heart. And this is going to go here. But because I <laughs> can see that this is going to blend in. I'm gonna do a gathered lace around the edge of the top part. And I've chosen this kind of ecru color because I feel like it'll provide enough of a contrast that the top part will be distinguishable from the gathered heart. Did that make sense? And then another option is that you could make this from a completely different fabric if you like. So I'm gonna take about a yard of this and gather it up by hand. I won't pull it too tight because I want it to 
go all the way around the edge. I've decided that just to be certain that I'm going to get a nice border or a contrast between the two hearts, I'm going to add an edge of rickrack. I love the rickrack. Um, just by gluing it, there's no real secret to it. I'm going to use hot glue to secure the rickrack to the back of this little heart. I'm going to work carefully so that the rickrack doesn't cup, but that it lays flat. Starting in the top center, and then I'm going to just sort of pleat it a little bit, if that makes sense, around the curves like that. Yeah, that's what I want. There we go, there's my little heart. And now I'm still gonna do the lace around the edge as well. I'm just gonna gather up the edge of this lace, in and out, in and out, all the way from the beginning to the end, one yard. But I'm not gonna pull it all the way as tight as it can possibly go. I'm gonna make sure that I have a lot of play in the thread so that I can sort of scooch the lace to fit around the edge of the heart. So there's my gathered lace and I'm going to sort of place it behind to see how it's going to look. I like that. Then I think I'll just wing it. When I say wing it, I mean, we'll determine the center approximately. Try not to let it twist like this. Make sure that it's kind of the, the, the gathering thread is on one side and then the edge of the lace is on the other side. I think this looks about right. So I'm gonna decide that this will be about the bottom and then this will be the top. So I'll begin to glue this at the top center in the back and I will carefully work my way around, just always checking to make sure enough of the lace is exposed over the edge like this and it's nice and full and ruffly and I think a yard of lace should be the right amount. Just an inch at a time, putting a lot of fullness into the rounded sections of the heart. So I'm just going to finish the, the top edge here and then just add a bunch of glue right there. And just sort of finish it off like that. That looks good. There we go. I'm just going to squeeze a generous amount of glue onto the back right along here. I know that looks so sloppy. And then I'm just gonna center it and place it right on this bottom tier. That looks good. So I'm going to squeeze out some glue all the way around the edge. And I'm working quickly. I'm gonna line this up. And 
hold it down until I feel like it's got a nice grip. Now I have a couple of options to go around the edge. This is the first one, which is pretty. I'll probably use this one. That'll be good. But my other option is this one. And I intend to use one of these, you know, cut this out as an applique and decorate the top of the box with that. And so if I use this one, that would sort of tie it all together and it look really coordinated. Now the other option is what if I did both? So what if I covered the edge with this and then added this? Is that too much? What do you think? Too much? I think that might be fun. Let's do that. Let's just go for it. I'm going to use this um, tacky glue, the world's greatest glue to secure the trim. The first piece of trim, I'm going to make sure that it's even with the bottom edge of the box lid. So more like that. Great. all the way around. I'm not gonna fold back the edge or anything. I feel like since the ends are gonna be in that little dip there, that I don't think that anybody's gonna notice those raw edges. And if I don't like the way it looks, I can always add some little doodad there to cover it up. Here's how it looks. Now for this gap, I'm going to use this trim. So I'm gonna glue this, and I'm going to arrange this so that the top edge comes around to the top of the box. Does that make sense? So this little bit will just wrap right around. I'm going to apply the tacky glue to the trim instead of to the box. We'll start with about that much. That looks good. I think I'm going to run the center of the trim right at the gap. That looks good. A little bit more glue, not much. There we go, about to there. Okay, let me snip that right there. Kind of press that in. And then I'm going to kind of wrap these petals and leaves around to the front a little bit. That looks good. <laughs> now I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> now it would be easy to continue to embellish the sides of the box. Maybe with something like this. Or some rickrack. That would be fun. But I know I have a tendency to over embellish. So I'm going to resist and say that this project is complete. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.